We are in section 7.1, and I want to work example 10 for you. And to start with, there is a part A and a part B. And it says find the inverse function, the inverse function of, find the inverse of f using that f is 2 sine of x minus 1. And it blocks it for us in our required um, quadrants. It mentions to go look at page 273. I mentioned that in my original video. I'm just going to go up here to the front end of this. <laughs> it's so funny that y'all can see inside my book, and it's like it's pretty a mess, pretty messy. But here's the brief version of to find an inverse. You might want to take a screenshot of this, and it does include page 273 for more information. So take a screenshot or a picture, but here we go. We're going to take f of x and replace it with y. We're then going to interchange the x and the y. Then we're going to solve for the y, which is the old x. When we are done, we're going to declare y is now not labeled as f of x, but as the inverse of f. And when we go to look for domain and range, the domain, old domain, is going to be the new range, and the new old, the old range is going to be the new domain. But we got to make sure that nothing weird happened and that we can still follow that. And we'll follow it, but we might have to make some adjustments. So starting with our f of x is 2 sine of x minus 1. Step number 1 was to take our f of x and replace it with y. There's step number 1. So what you're doing is you're mentally noting or putting some uh, notes to yourself on the side of how can I convert a function to its inverse. First thing, f of x we write as y. Second thing, we interchange the x and the y. So the y becomes the x and the x becomes the y. Once you've done these things, you just now need to solve for the old <laughs> x, which is the new y, so we need to solve for y. I'm not going to freak out about this. I'm going to notice I could move my 1, and then I could divide by 2. So that's what I'm going to do kind of in one swoop. I'm going to add 1 to both sides, and then divide both sides by 2, and I'm going to get x plus 1 divided by 2 equals sine of y. We have learned that an inverse means I will write, write that my y is worth the inverse sine of all of this answer, of all of this stuff. That's what we've been doing. And my final step is to take this y and replace it with inverse. And so my inverse of the function that I started with is the inverse of sine, and it's of x plus 1 over 2. And when you look at this, they left it as the y. So when you're doing your homework, follow their pattern. What are they asking? And on the test, I want you to go on to the inverse. y is OK, but officially we have taken it to the inverse of f. And it does look kind of wonky that it has inverse and an inverse. But the inverse function happens to contain an inverse sign. So we're finished with part A, and you might want to pause the video and go back and look at this, or even pause it and try to do it by yourself without looking at the notes, or wait until you're done with B, and then go try to do the whole thing without looking at your notes. So now they've asked us for a part B. And part B says, okay, let's find the range of F, whoa, and the domain and the range of the inverse of f. And so I've got some stuff highlighted. I'll go ahead and read the stuff highlighted. It says to find the range of f, because the first thing it wants is the range of f. Use the fact that the domain of the inverse equals the range of f. And so since the domain of the inverse is on this interval, then we've got to go and replace some stuff here. We've got more junk going on at the top of the next page, but let me go ahead and start. That's not exactly where I wanted to start, but um, I'd actually like to go ahead and answer this in order. When it says, let's find the range of f, remember the range of f where we started is going to be the new domain. And so the new... <laughs> This just cracks me up. I got too many pointings and too much, too much going on here. And so looking at this, um, <laughs> it's 
So I just stopped the recording. I apologize. My brain wanted to go one way. The book's going another way. So I paused. I see where they're going, but I still want to go my way and then go back around to theirs. So I'm going to start right here. They are asking for three things. They want the range of the original function, and they want the domain and the range of the one that we just created. They want the domain. Dom <laughs> They want the range of the original, and they gave us the domain of the original. So we have one of these four pieces done. But I want to go ahead and say that if we have the domain of the original function, we also have the range of the inverse. And so we have this last one done. And so here we have the domain of the original. That means it's going to be the range of the inverse. So this one's done. And we're only looking at these two here, the range of the old one, the original, and the domain of the new one. Now we can use these two pieces to help find what is going on here. At the top of the next page, it mentions this part last, and it does this part first. And so I will finish up with this to say, they gave us the domain of the original function, and so the range is going to be the same. I'm going to go back to the top of page 459, and not 400 and, but 459. It says the range of this inverse does equal the domain of the original, so this is our range. So check mark, one of these things is done, and it's the range of the inverse, and now we've got to sit here for just a little bit. And so sitting here just a little bit, we have where we left off. We have where we left off that our inverse function is worth some inverse sign. When we looked here on our formula card last time, we noted that our y is our x and our x is our y, and we noted some things about the drawing, and I put on the graph, I put on there that if we have sine, and it's going to go up and down, and it's going to have its domain going forever, but its range is from 1 to negative 1. So the range of the function is 1 to negative 1. Well, if this is the range of the function, then it's going to, going to be the domain of what's going on inside of here. With that in mind, this argument, this piece inside of here, belongs to, relates to, this 1 and negative 1. So with that in mind, we're going to put that x plus 1 over 2 in between what it can be. Again, we're done with this range of the inverse because it is what we started with. They are just opposites of each other. Right now, we're like, well, what was the range of what we started with? I don't know. But we can use the domain of the new one because it is from the old range of what is a sign, not this one in particular, but what is a sign in general. And it's going to be between the domain of the inverse is going to be in between 1 and negative 1. With that in mind, let's go ahead and solve. We'll multiply both sides by 2. And we're getting a negative 2 less than or equal to x plus 1. And since we've got inequalities, don't forget if we multiply or divide by a negative, we've got to reverse the direction of the inequalities. But we didn't. We multiplied by a positive 2. We are going to be able to subtract a 1, subtract a 1. And we're getting negative 3x less than or equal to x less than or equal to 1. And what we're noting is our x, which is our domain, has now been declared. Our domain, oh, and I've got it down here too. Our domain, our x, for our inverse function is going to be between negative 3 and 1. And so now I'll keep reading and looking at all of their stuff and now go the direction they wanted to go. And they're saying that, they're saying that the domain of our um, <laughs> inverse function we just discovered is in between the negative 3 and the 1. Or you can write it this way. So therefore, since this is the domain of the inverse function, it's also the range 
of the original function. So that with this one, two, and three pieces, that will answer this question. So with all of that excitement, this is a great time for you to either rewatch the video or look over your notes and then try to start fresh. And you truly might get you something like a sticky note or another piece of paper. Cover up as much as you can cover up and then try to replicate all of these parts without looking at your notes.